Hey everybody, Samantha here, and I would like to wish all you fathers out there a happy Father's Day. Enjoy this day of we're celebrating and spend time with your family. Make it a truly memorable day. So this week was E3, and I had the opportunity to see some of the gameplay for the new Call of Duty game coming out. Call of Duty World of... Or, why do I keep saying World of War? People keep making that same mistake. Call of Duty World War II. And to be honest, first impressions, didn't really care about it. And there were some things I was a little nitpicky about. And to be honest, I'm kind of tired of the freaking political correctness, the censorship that they put into the games. Like, for example, they censored the swastika and replaced it with the Iron Cross. And they incorporated women into the game. Really? You have to go there, Sledgehammer? That is not historically accurate at all. So, that pissed me off, but... So that kind of ruined my first impression of the game, but... I did watch some gameplay, and... Now that I've seen some stuff, it actually looks a little bit fun. Like, it might be a game worth playing, so... I don't know, maybe it'll grow on me. The multiplayer looks like it might be worth it. Looks a little bit better than Battlefield. Um, so, all that really remains right now is I need to see like what the rest of the game modes are like. What the campaign's like. Because those play a big part into uh, establishing the identity of the game. Like Not only just the multiplayer. Of course you want to get the multiplayer just right. But just the additional features of the game are important too when you want to come up with that game that everybody gets interested in so I'm curious to see that first so well hopefully we'll be able to get all that information pretty soon and then maybe understand a little bit more about the layout and the design and everything of multiplayer but also this week at E3 they also announced that this fall, they will be releasing the most powerful Xbox. The most powerful console yet to date, called the Xbox One X. And I could tell you all the scientific stuff about it. Of course, I don't understand a damn thing about it. But all I know is that it's two terabytes. Um, it's got true 4K resolution, blah, 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 fancy stuff, most powerful console. And the price is about $500. So. If you're one of those diehard, oh, I must get it kind of people, then feel free to buy that. For me, I'm sticking with my Xbox One S because I enjoy what I have right now and I don't need the next thing. Because this is the last console I'm getting, so. Bro, I already have it, so. But, yeah, that's what they introduced A3. Also this week... While I was playing Call of Duty Black Ops 2, I decided to tackle the Origins Easter Egg solo because um, I haven't had much success in the past. And to be honest, I've made it so far solo that I honestly probably could have beaten it. Well, that's a bit of a stretch because I was about halfway through the steps in the Easter Egg. But really what, where I was at in the Easter Egg was the part where when you do it solo... You have to go inside the robot's head and you have to press that button and then quickly throw the airstrike grenade on that hole outside the map. I just couldn't get down that throw, but now that I understand it, I think I'm pretty confident in uh, making that throw. So that's just one that's just one thing I kept struggling with. And other than that, I feel like I could have easily done the other steps, so. And plus the big problem with my playthrough is that I took my time. I should have rushed it a little bit more because by the time I was at that step, I was at round 20 and it would, there was literally no way I could have come back from that because the zombies kept getting tougher and my one hit, um, the one hit feature of the uh, new melee punch was not really working anymore. So, but yeah, I'm feeling pretty good. Hopefully I can beat the uh, Easter egg at some point this summer but yeah that's pretty much all that I really did this week um, 
Other than that, did the same old videos, did some backyard baseball, Call of Duty. I'm still working on the World at War Final Fronts playthrough. And GTA 5. Oh, yeah, the new DLC came out, the uh, gun running DLC. Let me, uh, hold on a second. And this one, I'm really not going to do much with just because it's a lot of expensive stuff that I don't need. But one thing I will get is the Pegasi Oppressor. And that bike, if you take it, that bike comes with like a jet engine on the back, kind of like the rocket car. And it allows you to glide and pretty much fly through the air. So it's a land vehicle capable of air travel. Now that's pretty cool. You can check out some of the uh, gameplay online and all that. It's pretty, it's pretty sweet. So if I can just get my hands on that, then that would be great. Um, yeah, but for a video this week, I did some bunker missions, stuff like slasher, kill quota, every bullet count, stuff like that. So um, I hope you guys enjoyed the video because I had some fun doing it. And I'm sure that you guys will enjoy it too. And then lastly, or not lastly yet, I started the next, the next little uh, mission cycle in my Battlefield's one campaign series and what I did is I did through mud and blood I did that war story and then I'll do the friends in high places this next week and then lastly what I uploaded was another episode of talking points and this week I talked about fidget spinners and my grossly underpaid assistant Dale who works at my company in GTA 5 but yep that's all you pretty much need to know that's all you, that's been happening this week but Thanks for watching the video, guys, and I'll catch you all later. Samantha Mount, see ya.